Ruby celebrities. What do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out. Thank you. What a great crowd. We don't get this. Uh, we don't get this kind of crowd in the studio every day. So this is amazing. Um, so. Uh, what a wonderful day out here in Austin, Texas. Uh, today, we are here to answer the age-old question. Ruby celebrities, what do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out! Um, let's introduce our guest. Uh, the first celebrity today needs no introduction. We have the creator of Ruby, Mats. For our next celebrity, we have the internet spider, Kylie Stradley. <laughs> For our final celebrity, we have Matthew Draper, who came from Australia, so everything is upside down to him. He also <laughs> occasionally works on rails uh, on the core team, so here he is. Well, hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time for idle chit chat because we have entered the small talk round. <laughs> now, unless you're a programming nerd, you might not know this, but small talk, as we s saw in uh, this morning's open keynote, is one of the earliest object-oriented language and uh, inspired a lot of languages um, that came after it, including Ruby, which is why we have the small talk round here. So, um, well, shall we? You know the rules, six seconds on the clock. <laughs> Matt, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 10 points for celebrities. <laughs> well, great job, Matt. Um, when do you get in? Uh, last, ni last night? Yes, that's a great answer. <laughs> Do you fly all the way here from Japan? Do, do. do you fly all the way here from Japan? Yes. Great answer. <laughs> 10 points for that. Um, so is this your first time in Austin? No. Oh, so 10 points. you like Austin? Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> Welcome. Sorry, Matt. It says on here that you love it. Uh, well, that's it for a small talk round. Audience, a big round of applause for the celebrities. Um, thank you, Mitz. You did a great job. 50 points total for the celebrities, if I counted correctly. So for now, let's take a break. And uh, after the break, we'll answer the age-old question. Ruby celebrities, what do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out! All right, celebrities, it's time for your first general knowledge question. Now, as you know, uh, the Ruby core team has a tradition of releasing the next version of Ruby on uh, Christmas Day, December 25th. So, do you also know which of the following blockbuster movies was released in the United States on Christmas Day, December 25th? Was it A, Home Alone, B, The Nightmare Before Christmas, C, Catch Me If You Can, or D, Solo, A Star Wars Story? So, now, let's start with... Um, let's start with you, Mats. Mats, what do you think? Have you seen any of these movies? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Which, which one is your favorite? Uh, Home Alone. Home Alone? Do you, think it's film, uh, do you think it came out on Christmas Day? I'm not sure, but... Catch me if you can? Catch me if you can? Okay. Um, so let's put it on the board. Um, now, Kylie, what do you think? Do you think... It is Catch Me If You Can. Now, obviously, you might be too young to have watched any of these movies. <laughs> I certainly was too young to have watched any of these movies, um, except the last one because I remember I watched that one solo. I, I like you, Godfrey, am also two years old, so I've, I've also only seen the solo movie. Um, and the solo movie came out this year, right? I guess that's kind of a spoiler because it's not Christmas yet. So. <laughs> Um, so I guess you're left with three choices. It's either <laughs> the two movies that uh, you haven't seen or Catch Me If You Can, Do You Trust Mats? 
Um, I've regretted this before, but uh, on this one, I trust Matt's. Okay. Well, let's hear it from Matthew also. Matthew. Um, do you like movies? I do. Yeah? Do you watch them upside down as like in Australia? <laughs> if, if I put my head upside down, then ah, cancel it. I see. It must be hard. <laughs> so, uh, which of these have you seen before? I think I've seen all but the solo film. Wow. Because I'm too old. Okay, well, you just didn't see the best one. Um, so, what is it going to be? Is it going to be Home Alone, Nightmare Before Christmas, or Catch Me If You Can? The Nightmare Before Christmas has Christmas in its name. Uh -huh. And Paul, which uh -huh. implies that it's not on Christmas. Right, but maybe it can't But I'm going like to go with that anyway. On Christmas. So, you, you think, sorry, which one do you think? Yeah, I think it might be Not before, Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> okay, so now. Celebrities, I need you to work as a team and come up with a final answer for me. Now you're two to one on Catch Me If You Can right now, um, but you have, uh, let's say, 10 seconds to change your mind. <laughs> All right, that was 10 seconds. What is your final answer, celebrities? I'm going to defer to Matt. Okay, well, Matt, what is it going to be? Uh, no idea. <laughs> no idea. It was unfortunately not one of these, but it, it might be an answer for a future question, though. But for now, A, B, C, or D. C? Okay, C, catch me if you can. That's your final answer. Let's see. Answer was C. Catch me if you can. Great work, celebrity. Now, um, your next question is going to be from the ecosystem category. So now, um, as Ruby users, we certainly uh, have a lot of gems to choose from there. Like so, uh, we have a fantastic culture of sharing and reusing code. So whatever you need to do, there's probably a gem out there for it. And if there isn't one, you should probably write one and publish it to Ruby Gems. So. Now, with so many gems available to us, there are always new gems to be discovered. Released in 2011, what does the vacation gem promise to do? They said, A, deploy, compile and deploy your Jekyll site to S3. Um, B, make it easier for you to write CLI to command line tools. Or C, parses output from your test harnesses or D, uh, forces your server to take an annual vacation for two weeks. <laughs> so this time, let's start with Kylie. What do you think? Have you used this gem before? No. Okay, yeah, that's probably before your time, right? 20, 2011? Yeah, it, it was before my time, too. And it, Five this, years before I was born. Yeah. Um, goodness. Uh, sure. Sure, why not B? Sorry? B, why not? B, okay, let's put on the screen. So, um, Matthew, what do you think? I like B too. Yeah, you like B? Yeah, we, it, it, you probably haven't used this gem either. We tried to find a pretty um, like obscure gem so you wouldn't know the answer, right? Otherwise, what's the point? Um, Jump down. And it's developed in 2011, so Matt's <coughs> Which of these do you think it's going to be? Do you think S3 was out in 2011? <laughs> oh, S S3 was definitely there in 2011. Yeah? So the oh, you have really good memory. <laughs> I wonder if you worked on uh, uh, I pick C. memory <laughs> reading stuff. So you can clap that one later. Um, I pick C. You pick C. OK, so. Um, again, we have a split, two to one split on between B and C. So celebrities, you have um, 10 seconds to come up with a final answer. Uh, you have to be how confident are you? <laughs> <laughs> no.
We pick B. Okay, you pick B. Let's see. Oh. Well, it turns out S3 was a thing in 2011. Um, I believe the gem's description said the point of the gem is you can deploy your site to S3 and then you can take a vacation. Yeah, that's the vacation gem. Um, before we move on, does anyone have a favorite gem? No? No? Not Rails? No? Okay. Well, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't know what to pick either. So many of them. Um, so we have two questions down. Um, we have pre-spun the category slot machine and we pick your final category. This time it is going to be the stand library. Now, as you know, Ruby ships with a vast stand library, making it super easy to accomplish basically any everyday task, right? So um, however, even then, there are still things that you can't do with Ruby out of this box from the standard library. Which of the following components does not come standard with the Ruby standard library? Was it A, a prime number generator, B, a module for reading and writing zip files, C, a class for parsing and generating RSS feeds for the iTunes format, or D, a web server? Now, we will start with Matthew this time. Hmm. At first glance, I think that they're all in the standard library. You think they're all in the standard library? Um, do, you, do, you, do you use iTunes? Because I no. don't, and I don't really know what an iTunes RSS feed is. It's just written on here. Um, <laughs> okay, so you think they're all on the all in the standard library? Should I pick one for you? <laughs> I, I'm going to pick D if you if you ask me. Always go for D. I'll go with B. You're gonna go with B? Okay. Let's uh, do Kylie next. Kylie, what do you think? Uh, I mean, there's a lot I don't understand about Ruby, but I, I really would not understand why working with iTunes RSS feeds would be in the standard library. Right. I guess for that. This role, could be my own shortcoming, but that, that's my guess. For that, let's ask Mats. <laughs> <laughs> Mats, do you know the answer to this one? Uh, yeah, I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's D. It, okay, so before we, before we do the final answer, uh, what's up with uh, Ruby and iTunes RSS feed? <laughs> It's an it's an uh, the the application of the uh, the, the standard RSS uh, XML feed library. I see. So there's a standard for the iTunes flavor of RSS for your podcast. And Ruby, being Ruby, has everything that you will possibly need out of the box. Has a class for parsing and generating iTunes RSS feeds. So now you know if you're publishing podcasts or anything, you can just go to the Ruby standard library. So it sounds like. You're pretty confident about B, right? Yeah. Is, is everyone happy with that? Reading and writing zip files? Yeah, yeah. All right, that sounds like confidence to me. Um, <laughs> silence, so let's see. Yes, the correct answer is B. Now, the Ruby standard library does come with a class for uh, reading and writing gzip files, um, but not zip files. So they they both use the deflate algorithm, or at least the most common variant, both use the deflate algorithm, but they um, have slightly different um, packaging around them. And so Ruby only supports gzip out of the box, but no problem, as we said, there's always a gem for it. So if you need it, you can just install gem. So, that was a great round, and um, let's take another break. When we come back from the commercials, we will continue to answer the HO question. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Now, we really, final, we really finally answered the HO question. Ruby celebrities, what do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out! All right, celebrities, it's time for the survey round. So now, for this round, we have surveyed 100 Ruby developers, and we asked them, what is the number one feature 
they want to see in Ruby 3.0. Uh, we tally the answer and we have the top eight answers on the board. So here are the most wanted uh, Ruby 3 features in the non-scientific poll. I'm excited about this one. <laughs> Um, so uh, the rules are very simple. You basically have to guess one of the top answers that we put on the board, and if you're right, it will show up. Uh, and if you're wrong, and if you get it wrong three times between the team, then uh, you unfortunately lose this round. Are we good to go? Yeah. All right, let's start with Matt's. Matt's, what do you think is one of the most wanted Ruby 3 features? Uh. Jit, com JIT compiler? JIT compiler. Okay. Let's see. Great answer. Great answer. Thank performance. Um, so we, we grouped a few things together for performance. So it has 12 volts in total. Um, um, one of the, so amount JIT compilers, performance, speed in general. Um, there was also one answer that is just simply JVM. I don't know what that means, but yeah, you can do that one. Um, okay, so um, that was a great answer. Thank you, Matt. So let's move on to Kylie. Um, now, before you answer that, what would be your personal most wanted Ruby free feature? You don't, you don't have to put this in if you don't want it. Um, I, it's just kind of a lot of pressure. Uh -huh. So you, you don't know. So, okay. <laughs> and the, that's on the board. Um, so out of the, that was great, great work. <laughs> out of the 100 responses, um, 20 something of them were blank and I took the liberty to interpret that as meaning they don't want anything in Ruby 3.0 because Ruby is already so great, so the only thing you possibly want is stability as uh, Matt's talked about this morning. So, stability, 30 votes. Um, now, Matthew, uh, what would be your guess for a um, Ruby 3.0 Ruby 3.0 feature? Frozen strings by default. Frozen strain by default. Let's see. Is it on there? Oh, can we have the sound effect, please? Ah, there we go. We have immutable data structures. So um, some of the answers are immutable strings by default. Some, uh, one of the entry was uh, titled monads. <laughs> Okay, so back to you, Matt. Um, do you want to take another guess? Like your guess is probably as good as mine, but my guess is pretty good. So, uh, concurrency. Concurrency. Let's see it. There we go. Nine votes for concurrency. Great answer. Now, um, I, I think actually for concurrency, we have a, we have a bundle of answers that was grouped in here, including. Um, async IO, um, async await, and also one entry was titled an option to disable the global interpreter lock. <laughs> yep. Um, okay, so let's move on to Kylie. Do you have a guess for you, what you what this crowd might want from? Actually, it's not just this crowd because I actually uh, last month, was it last month, last month I think, I traveled all the way to Russia to collect the um, early election results for <laughs> this one. <laughs> um, and uh, so I, half of, like maybe 20 of the answers was from a, a conference in, in Russia, like the, the Ruby free feature election. <laughs> um, so um, do you have any guess or would you like to pass? Uh, do the Russians want strict typing? Strict typing, let's see it. Yes, you're correct. You have 11 votes for types. Now that includes, um, I believe, everything from uh, soft typing, regular typing, strong typing, optional types, and everything in between. So um, 
Celebrities, you're, you're doing great so far. Uh, yeah, let's keep going. Matthew, what's next? It's going to get harder from here. Rails in the standard library. Rails in the standard <laughs> library. Let's see it. Uh, however, I believe I do have one entry. So you have to have at least two entries to go on the board. That's the rules. But um, I believe I have one entry here that says active record. So you're not totally wrong. It's just not popular enough. Okay, so um, back to Matt. Do you have another guess? It's uh, gonna get tricky from here. Bundler as a standard library. Sorry, say that again. Bundler as a standard library. Ah, bundler as a part of. Bundler. Let's see. Yes, developer tooling. So this is a pretty broad one. So that includes a. Uh, Bundler comes standard. Um, also, a lot of people want a standard formatter similar to Go FMT or Rust FMT. Um, someone said compiler, someone said pry, someone said better AST introspections. Um, and one gentleman over there said less C macros. <laughs> whatever, whatever that means. And also, um, someone said better code organization. And the, my favorite one is. Um, better errors. I don't think they mean the jam better errors, but I think um, some neural language has like error codes or links in the error message that you can easily click through to the documentation for those errors. So when you see, uh, when a beginner seeing, um, instead of telling them undefined method foo on new class, they would be like, oh, this is probably what you're trying to do, and here's more information. And I thought that one was pretty great. Maybe you think about it. <laughs> no pressure, though. It's only, you know, it's only 11% of uh, the extrapolated Ruby users' user base. Um, so, we have two items on the board. This is going to be incredibly difficult. Um, Kylie, do you have any ideas? At this point, you can probably just work together as a team to, um, if any of you have any idea to help Kylie out, here, that would be great because it's down to the last two mystery items. Was, it, was there supposed to be like an actual Ruby celebrity? And then I was like, <laughs> you're, you're, you're the Ruby they celebrity. couldn't come? No, no, you're, you're, doing, you're doing great. Like, I mean, here, here's the thing. We surveyed 100 Ruby celebrities. And you know, any of you could have picked any of these things. And uh, you could have picked it. And you got the, you got the facility one right. So, that's, a, that's also the highest percentage one, that's 30%. 30% of you said, actually, it's a little bit higher than that because 30% um, said blank, and um, I think nine of you said no idea, which is obviously, that's yeah, that's, <laughs> that's obviously a different category from blank. Um, and uh, while, while you're working on it as a team, um, I can tell you some of the answers that are pretty popular but barely did not make it on the board, so that might help you out. Um, so there are a couple of them that I grouped in a category called uh, regrets. Um, so, <laughs> or more appropriately, fixing some of the regrets. Um, so uh, I think one of the answer is uh, a strict mode in Ruby where we disallow some of the unexpected things like allowing you to reassign constants, something like that. Um, I believe that's probably inspired by JavaScript um, and I personally like that one also. But um, speaking of regrets, there are also one answer called uh, bucket in this category called uh, free tacos, I believe. <laughs> and um, also there was another one that was uh, called it's too hard to come up with something this early in the morning, which I figured <laughs> is probably also part of the regret category. Okay, celebrities. We are down to the last two answers. Um, let me take a peek of what it might be. Oh, okay. Yeah, though the last two are pretty broad categories. So if you just take a shot in the dark, you might just end up landing on one of the related things that got grouped into this category.
What about Matt and Matthew? Do you have any personal favorite that you think you would love to see, but might or might not be on the board? Better keyword arguments. <laughs> Better keyword arguments. Let's see it. Oh, new syntaxes. So um, that was a pretty broad one. Uh, that included, I think some people wanted um, pattern matching, split operator, uh, hash literal syntax. I think the idea is if you have a variable called foo, and you, if you say curly braces foo curly braces, that should mean curly braces foo colon foo close curly braces. Like it, um, I think that's called the object literal syntax in JavaScript. That's probably where it came from. Um, there was also one that called, uh, that was titled first class functions. Um, I figured that was mostly a syntactic thing since we have pretty good like lambda prop and stuff. So whoever wants to take the last one, or I can give it away as a freebie. No one? What about the audience and what do you think? You've participated in this. What do you think? Just one, two, three, shout your own answer. <laughs> one, two, three, go. Yeah, 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 no, no, okay. Well, the last one is GC and memory improvements. So that was, um, that was it for the survey round. And now we, we move on to the final game of the night and this one is gonna be more fun. Um, this is gonna be the loop of fortune. So the idea is that you go like uh, in turn, so it's like a loop, right? So yeah, so uh, we have uh, picked a piece of Ruby code snippet from uh, somewhere on the interwebs, and uh, we have turned it into a board for you. And today, your category is Ruby on Rails. <laughs> okay, so this is your board. Uh, now, Matt, I heard you're not a Rails user, right? No. Yeah, you don't use Rails. Are, are you confident about this? No. <laughs> no? Okay, well, we're going to go with it anyway. This time it's going to be easier because um, all you have to do is pick one of the consonants. So there are 21 of them in the English language, I think. Something like that, 2021. Who knows? We'll edit that part out the, on live TV. Um, but um, so you can guess a letter but you can also guess a number, so zero to nine, um, or you can buy a vowel, um, or a, you can also buy a symbol, so if you want to buy a colon, for example, you can do that, and uh, we take uh, cash or credit cards, so have your, have your preferred payments, uh, method of payment ready, uh, in case you want to buy some vowels. So, um, Matt, do you want to go first? Yeah, should I say some letters? Yeah. Numbers? Pick one letter, pick one non-vowel, I guess. Uh, the number four. Number four, <laughs> wow, that was a wild guess. And it's on the board. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> give it up, Max. Wow. <laughs> if I've ever seen a good round of uh, loop of fortune, <laughs> that was it. Okay, Kylie, why don't you pick a favorite lucky letter or number? Uh, I see some three-letter words towards the end there, so I'm gonna go with D. Ah, sir, I see what you did there. The N. Uh-huh, so you might be right about that. So I guess this is Ruby code. I didn't say it has to be Ruby code, but looks like it. Um, Matthew, what do you think? I'm gonna follow a similar strategy and say F. F, let's see. Okay. We have three of them. That was, uh, that was pretty good. So now we have, I don't know, like a, a third of the board showed up. Um, what are you thinking, Silver? You're on the Rails core team, right? Yeah. Um, well, that looks like a method definition. Looks like method definition. That's a that pretty confident. good guess. Um, why don't we go back to Kylie? Kylie, you can pick another letter. Uh, let's, 
go for what I think is there. How about N? Okay, let's see an N. Oh. Is it going to be N or is it going to be N? <laughs> could be either, right? Like it, like it could be an A, it could be an E. Could, Maybe, could it? it? It could be, right? It could be and is a word, right? A and D. Yeah. Well, Mets, do you do you want to uh, spend some money to buy a vial to figure out what is it going to be? <laughs> like, do you do you know if it's going to be end or end? Like, that's the that's the controversy right here. Um, if you want, I can cut you a deal for two hundred fifty dollars for a vial. Uh, they are too easy, so uh, I go S. Okay, Matt goes S. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. So we have. Three S's on the board. I hope that is helpful. So um, back to Kylie. Now, what could it be? What's what and what English word ends with two S's? <laughs> any, any guesses from the audience? Grass. Grass is a pretty good guess. So maybe G. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Uh, let, let's just try C. See? Okay, let's see. Hey, we have one C. Okay, so back, back to Matthew. What is it going to be? Are you going to, so I guess it can't be grass anymore, but it could be crass? Cross. Yeah, it could be cross. C-R-O-S-S. -S. Right. So if you want to guess the O, since it's you, maybe you can do it for two forty nine ninety nine. Is that Australian or US? Um, your pick. I think I'll go with an L. L? Okay, let's see an L. Okay. Ooh, we have two L's. So, um, at this point, we're back to Kylie. And looks like we didn't make much progress on the top right there. Maybe it's just A, 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 A. Like... C L something S S and then A A A A. Now, if you want to guess a vowel, <laughs> he, he really wants R, but it's your guess. So whatever you want. I'll even here's the thing. I, I I guess I can't really give away a vowel because that would be, you know, like we we'll, we'll go out of business in two days. But um, how, how's that? You can either guess a consonant. Or I can give you a symbol for free if you have a symbol in mind. Underscore. <laughs> Underscore. Um, what, uh, what about T? T? Okay, let's see. Ah, so we have two T's over there. Um, so what could that be? So that's, that's probably a word, right? I guess they're all words. Um, it's either a word or a keyword. So now, Matt, my offer is still good. <laughs> I, I see something. Yeah, so that I'd go A. You, okay, well, A is going to cost you some money. So are you sure about that? Yeah. Okay, well, it's Matt, so we'll give it away for free. So A, let's see it. So we have one A, two A's, three A's. Ooh. So, <laughs> so <laughs> what is it going to be? Um, Kylie, what's your guess? My offer on a symbol is so good if you want to pick a symbol. They really want you to go for a dot. Yeah, uh, art. Art feels like a, a crowd favorite. Sorry? Arc. Arc. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Let's see it. Okay. We have three R's. That was a that was a so that's like probably some something to do with pirates. Um yeah, so Matthew, uh, it's back to you. Remember you can always solve the puzzle if you're feeling lucky. Are we in a hurry? I, I, I'm going to follow Matt's example and say one. One. <laughs> okay, let's see a one. Wow, that was a complete shot in the dark. 
<laughs> we have 41 on the board. What is it going to be? Um, so, Kylie, a consonant or right, at this point, it doesn't matter anymore. Nothing matters anymore. A consonant, a vowel, a symbol, up to you. Anything you want. Yeah, let's go with O. Let's say an O. Okay, we have two O's. Okay, so back to maths. Yeah. I think we're getting close. Uh, the most fre frequent letter in English is E. Okay, let's see an E. <laughs> okay, so we have class R, deaf, four, two, and then <laughs> self, four, one, and then two ends. What is it going to be? Is anyone going to solve it? Or are we going to pick another letter or symbol? Kylie, it's your call. It's Looks like Matthew is going to solve the puzzle. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll solve it. It's class array, def 42, self square bracket, for one square bracket, and n. Let's see. <laughs> Everyone, round of applause for celebrity, especially Matthew. So, um, so this is a method we picked up from the rail source code. Um, <laughs> as you can see, it's a monkey pad for the array class. Um, it's a convenience method for accessing the 42nd element um, on the array. I believe the story was um, one day uh, DHH started adding um, a few accessor methods on array, like second, third, um, second to last, and some, something like that. And then someone on Reddit was super pissed off about that. And it's like, where are we going to stop? Are we going to have 42? And then DHH was like, OK, you're going to have 42. And <laughs> it's, in, uh, it's in the real school bay ever since. Um, Matt, so you think this feature is going to make it into Ruby at some point? <laughs> no? <laughs> OK, well, um, everyone, please give a big round of applause to the celebrities. They did a great job. Today, we answered the age old question. Ruby celebrities, do they know things? Audience, what do you think? Yes. Thank you very much. See you next time. It's time to play Ruby celebrities. What do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out.